Oh, hello. What's good, everybody? Do I feel good today? My goodness. Welcome into our final dress rehearsal before driving the line. Your brand new sports betting community brand of record goes live, live, live tomorrow, Monday, January 15th. Follow us all over the socials. Follow us right here at our YouTube page. Give a share, get a like, give it a subscribe because we're going to grow this into the biggest brand in the world. So much happened yesterday in the NFL. Also a little college hoops. We nailed those as well. And then we got two more games today and the possibility of the Bills game tomorrow being moved to Tuesday. So we got a lot to tackle over the course of the next 30 to 45 minutes. So without further ado, let's bring in the stars of the show. You know them. You love them, and they're going to be here all the time. My man, Phil McKagan, Coach Phil, is here. A.B. is here. And how about for the second day in a row, from the jump, Howie Schwab, you broke the internet yesterday. Hey, yeah. I'm here on time, and uh, no technical issues. None whatsoever. Now, before we get started, I've got to be a little bit selfish today because there are two reasons that I feel fantastic today. First and foremost, my Chiefs got it done last night in impressive fashion. But also, take a little look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Why am I showing a golf ball right now? Well, yesterday, for just the second time in my life, 28 years in between, your boy, you don't tell me there's a little bit of good vibes going on? Hole in one at my club with my son, with one of my best friends, and here is the ball right here. I'll You're be the man. Posting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be posting all over social media. I didn't want to do it yet. I'm trying to get the videos and the pictures. But what do you guys think about your boy getting a hole-in-one yesterday, A.B.? All right, so, Coach, I've got to say, I mean, first off, anytime getting a hole-in-one is fantastic, but I also have to say, look, I kind of had my own hole-in-one yesterday as well, except on the opposite, and what that looks like is 0-5 on the recap. But here's what we're going to do. Well, number okay. one, we're not running or hiding from any of it. Number no. two, it is a good lesson in the playoffs because we broke down, all right, what Joe Flacco would do absolutely perfectly, and I got too damn cute with it, and that's what got us in trouble. So trust your gut always with that. But we're never going to run from that whatsoever. Our recap will show it every day. And number two, Sounds like my dumbass owes about a hundred dollars to a charity. So somebody go ahead and pick that out because oh, that's a punishment right there. We got to donate. I'm so glad that you brought that up because our charity of choice oh. starting right now will be golf for cops. I've been involved for four years. We're going to be doing content with them. They support families who have lost a family member in the line of duty, father, mother, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, whatever. That's going to be our charity of choice. So you, sir, and I hate to do it before we even get to day one, you owe 100 bucks. Are you cool with that? <laughs> hey, you know what? After yesterday, I'm surprised I don't owe 200 bucks. <laughs> so, yeah, 100%. But, yeah, we wanted to make sure the recaps and everything will always be transparent on this show, no matter what, good, bad, indifferent. And number two, that sounds like an excellent charity coach. Happy to donate. Absolutely. Now, you used the word, too. Howie, yesterday, how many college basketball plays did you hit on the show yesterday, sir? Uh, two for two. Oh, 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 interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, All right. I mean, a, that made me work. But Kansas <laughs> was easy, and Dickinson did what I expected. Had a big double-double, yeah. and, uh, yeah, I, I was okay. Yeah, nobody knows more about college basketball than my man. He's going to be here all the time. Picks almost every single day. Now, before we get to a single college basketball pick from Howie, I want to recap very quickly what happened yesterday. And in game number one, we talked about here on the show, and the consensus kind of was, and with the chat, that the Browns were more playoff ready. They were the favorite on the road. But, Howie, let me start with you. Because the Texans yesterday not only showed they were ready, scoring 45 points, but they laid it on the Browns. Were you surprised? Uh, as the game went on, I realized how wrong I was because Cleveland's defense got chewed up. Stroud played great. They were able to hit the receivers. Uh, they were able to run the ball. Singletary ran well. And, and the thing that really was amazing was Flacco got beat up. I mean, the Houston defense was outstanding. And, and then, of course, Houston's defense – pick sixes, I mean, you, 
you can't expect it to be that crazy, but sure enough, Houston blew him out. Give credit to Houston. I missed on that one. That's okay. We all that's why we discuss too. Phil, let me come to you because you know more than any of us what it takes when you're inside a locker room in the playoffs. We talked yesterday about how it changes how you proceed. How impressed were you with CJ Stroud and those Texans yesterday? I thought CJ Stroud solidified himself as a top 10 quarterback in this league. I thought he went out. I thought he was decisive. I thought his subtle movements within the pocket, stepping up, stepping to the right, and still delivering the football accurately down the field was sensational early in the game. I thought his, his implementation of Nico Collins in the game plan and the ability to find him, who's been a, a third-year player out of Michigan, who's had an awesome year. I thought his ability to find Nico early and set the tone. And then the, the last thing I'll say about this offense is Bobby Slowick – had an outstanding game plan. A lot of screens, a lot of deceptives, a lot of things that really stretched the defense horizontally and then attacked the defense vertically. So I thought he did an outstanding job. And then we talked about these defenses. They are two excellent defensive coaches. And you saw that, that D'Amico put his defensive players in positions to take the ball away from Flacco and not just take it away, but also put points on the board. And when you do that, you have a 99.9% .9 chance of winning in the playoffs when you have two pick sixes like that. Great take from Phil. Now, real quick, Chad Stern, for those of you that are brand new to our brand, we have people that run the chat. We're also going to have uh, cappers in the chat every single day. Chad says 174 folks watching a dress rehearsal and only 63 likes. When we go live, it'll be critical for all of you to like, share, subscribe if the crew is going to thrive. Chad's our guy. He'll take care of the chat. You guys will get to know him. Also, other people in there. We are a crew for a reason. Now, A.B., let me come to you. It was nice weather in Houston, but we were talking about the bad weather in Kansas City. Well, it was very clear when they showed that graphic of Patrick Mahomes under 40 degrees and Tua under 40 degrees, there was such a significant difference. But when you watched them play, you saw because it didn't affect Mahomes or Rice whatsoever. After that, does it change your perspective on the Chiefs? Well, I'll say this. Uh, you know, we were speaking of uh, heading into the playoffs and the postseason of, of everybody being down on Kansas City. It, it it almost seems like they do. we do this every single year. Now, I'm not saying the Chiefs are what they were last year or the last three or four years, but this is a team that is playoff tested. They're battle tested. And they honestly, did, besides Rice, they really didn't have that great of a game from the skill position. Travis Kelsey could play better. He's had drops all season long. So what I mean by that is that this team can get better, which is scary. So we'll see what happens with the rest of the playoff games and where their next game goes. Uh, looking at Miami, look, this is a good football team, but notice what Kansas City did last night. They simplified everything, okay? Get to the line, snap the ball, don't have your offensive line sitting there for 25 seconds in minus 30 degrees. Just snap it and go. Miami is too precision built. They're really good when everything's built their way, but when it's not, completely different team. So, you know, I, I don't know about roster construction, but they got to get some toughness over there. Howie, I'm coming to you, Phil. I got one for you, too, before we move on. Howie, uh, yesterday, and I want your take on the game, but I noticed that you and Taylor Swift have something very much in common. I think oh. you, have the, you have the same jacket that she was wearing yesterday, custom-made for you. Do you not? Uh, not quite, but uh, close. I mean, uh, first of all, I'm impressed that she even went in that weather. That really says a lot. But anyway, bottom line was this. Miami, exactly what Phil just said. I mean, Miami, how many times did Tua drop back, have a guy who opened in the slot and couldn't hit him? His footwork was off. Mm -hmm. The weather killed him. I mean, and defensively, I mean, hey, if Kansas City didn't uh, settle for field goals half the time, this would have been a real blowout. It was a, a one-sided game as is. But Miami's defense, as hard as they played, and they played okay. The bottom line is this, Mahomes, I mean, I remember one play, got out of the pocket, goes down 15 yards, and you're like, game's over. Mm -hmm. Kansas City's going to roll in this game. Mahomes is Mahomes. Uh, everyone who criticized Kansas City down the stretch, same old story. And watch out. They're going to be very dangerous the rest of the way.
And Phil, Howie brings up a really good point that the defense yesterday, and I know it was in weather and you can't have the whole playbook, but they were flying all over the field. They were making plays. They had Tyreek and Jalen Waddle completely locked down except for the one touchdown. Because of what you saw defensively, how dangerous, because in all likelihood, it's going to be Buffalo next week. How impressed and how dangerous do you think the Chiefs are? The Chiefs are always dangerous. I mean, we criticize them because they're they're ultra talented. But the when but the reality is, is when you see them on your schedule, you're concerned about that. The defense is young. They're they're cheap too, so they're going to be around a while. Um, they they fly around. They have great leadership where they're actually paying guys with Chris Jones and the linebacking core. You know, you can see some really good traits about this team that that possibly can turn some teams over going into it. But the facts are, the, are this: we we talked about this. I, I told you two things were certain to happen. Pacheco is going to get a lot of carries, all right, and, and Kansas City is conditioned to this weather. And it even showed you who had the only touchdown, somebody who spent four years in Kansas City or more, Tyreek Hill. So th this is not a reasonable expectation where you can take six or seven guys who are injured reserve or out that are starters on the Miami Dolphins and then go into Kansas City, who is defending Super Bowl champions, and beat them at Arrowhead. Not happening. Yeah, Howie brought it up yesterday with Chubb out with a torn ACL. It really uh, didn't allow A.B., go quickly. I, I just want to bring this up, uh, and we don't know the answer to it yet, but just have it on your mind. Kansas City got a win at home on Saturday. Buffalo might not play until Tuesday now mm -hmm. in regards to weather. That is an unbelievably short week for Buffalo to turn around against a physical Steelers team and Kansas City sitting here with a week to prepare. If that, if, if that matchup happens, just keep that in mind. Yeah, I wonder... I wonder if they would move that game to Monday next week just to give the Bills at least five full days of rest. But we'll see. It, it's it all on the table. It's all on the table right now. They're going to be having meetings at 345 Park, and they're going to be having a board, and there's going to be scenarios out the wazoo. They're calling teams. Donna Ponte is calling the head coaches. There's a process when these things happen, and nobody is built better than the NFL to handle stuff like this. All right, very good. You are watching – TV may have a say in this too. TV Huge may thing. be very upset if they uh, move games around all the time now with this situation. But you know what? It, what's fair is fair. They should. 100%. They're paying billions and billions of dollars. All right. We're going to leave yesterday there. Real quick, if you're just tuning in right now, this is our final dress rehearsal. We call this driving the line. We're just kind of moving the goalposts. We're not restarting. We're relaunching a little bit to the right. If you know, then you know. Follow us here on YouTube. We're going to be so much bigger than that. Follow us every single day live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Our golf brand starts Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and we're going to have a full website. We love BetMGM, hint, hint, and we also love everybody else that has reached out. Now, Sunday is not a super busy day in college basketball, but when I have the best college basketball mind at our disposal, before we get to football, very quickly, Howie, I come right back to you, because you've targeted a game in the Big Ten, and one of the head coaches, I actually went to school, high school, with his brother, Brad Underwood, from McPherson, oh, wow. Kansas. Yeah, uh, TJ is his younger brother. They're playing at home today. 2 p.m. Eastern time. What do you see it? Well, Maryland 10 and 6 right now, a team that has kind of struggled this year. The thing about them, uh, I look at them, for example, going on the road. They lost at Minnesota. They lost at Indiana. This is a team that has scored under 70 points the last three games. Illinois is averaging over 80 a game. I mean, to me, Illinois has done a great job of figuring things out ever since Terrence Shannon was uh, suspended from the team due to an off-court alleged situation. We'll leave it at that. Legal people can figure it out. Uh, Illinois, I'm impressed. Uh, Damask has been really good at transfer, uh, inside-outside player. Quincy Guerrero, a transfer also, has done a great job on the boards. I really am impressed with this Illinois team. And they beat FAU, too. So I'm going to go Illinois laying the eight and a half over Maryland at home. All right, very good. Just so you guys know the schedule, we've got a lot of talent, but we're going to have a schedule just like any TV brand would have or linear TV. And Howie will be on the show Tuesdays and Thursdays. However, Howie, quickly, you have a game tomorrow, Villanova and Marquette. You, you can wait for the pick tomorrow to see what happens. But why are you targeting that game? 
Well, Marquette right now has been a bit of a disappointment lately. I mean, this is a team that was number five in the preseason bowls, picked a bit favorite as the Big East team to beat. They're two and three in the league, and they need to get going. And I really think they will at home against Villanova. Villanova's been an inconsistent team. I mean, it's going to be interesting, too. <coughs> Here we go again. That's all right. Dwayne Wade is going to be in attendance. And I think Marquette will be lifted by the fact that Dwayne Wade is there. He showed up in Hawaii, and they won two games when he was there. Interesting. But bottom line, they have to get going. They realize it. And I think Marquette will beat out Villanova. All right. That'll be one of our official uh, picks tomorrow. But Howie will have his own thing. Even when he's on the show, you can still tune in and get his college basketball picks every single weekday. Now, the bread and butter today. And Philzy, you know I'm coming for Coach Phil's keys to the game. One or 4.30 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon. It's going to be very warm inside that beautiful stadium down there in Arlington, Texas. And the spread has now moved down to a very important number in sports betting, seven. It was seven and a half yesterday. It's seven today. The total, 50 and a half. Green Bay, this could be the coming out playoff party for one Jordan Love, the next superstar quarterback in the lineage of the Green Bay Packers. When you look at this game, how are you breaking it down? Yeah, let's start with the with, with the road team, the Green Bay Packers, the seventh seed. Just from an injury standpoint, they're looking pretty healthy. Aaron Jones is coming back. He's had three straight games of 110 yards rushing. So they're on a three-game winning streak. So this is a very live dog, as everybody can see. Um, Jordan Love, 32 touchdown passes on the season. I mean, this guy is really rolling right now for a young player. I mean, middle of the year, we weren't really sure. Now it's almost clear that he's a franchise quarterback to everybody that's that's evaluating quarterback play. Another area that I'm really excited to, to watch today is this young group of wide receivers. We have Jaden Reed, who's who's setting records now as a rookie for the Green Bay Packers. Romeo Dobbs, Dontavious Wicks. Everybody is really rolling at that receiver group, and they are young and they are hungry. Jordan Love has 100-plus rating in seven out of the eight last games. All right, and their pass pro is third in the league, so he should be upright today, even though they have a great pass rush in Dallas. Against pressure, Jordan Love has 11 touchdowns and one pick, so he's lighting people up when you pressure him. Green Bay's pass rush is getting home. That Rashawn Gary has nine sacks. Preston Smith has eight. Two guys have 20-plus uh, quarterback hits. And this Green Bay pass defense has given up some yardage and passer rating to wide receivers and tight ends. When you flip the script and we go over to Dallas, you know, we got to talk about Dak Prescott. Led the league in touchdowns, 36 touchdowns, six picks, 105.9 rating, almost 70% completion percentage, 265 yards a game. This, If it wasn't for Lamar Jackson, this guy would be – discussed as possibly the MVP of the league. You know, they won their final two games. They got a little momentum. We talked about Dak leading the league in touchdowns. C.D. Lamb, 135 catches, 1,749 yards, led the league in catches. What a dog. This guy's a real ball player. And Tony Pollard and Ferguson are good enough to keep you honest. And Cooks has eight touchdowns uh, on the year, which he's emerged over the last half of the season. Dallas is 8-0 at home. They've taken 40 sacks on the year, which is not wonderful. All right, but their points per game is near 30, 29.9. They are first in the NFL on third down, which is out, or second on third down, which is outstanding. All right, and again, Micah Parsons, Deron Bland has nine picks, six to the house. I mean, this is a legitimate team. They are, they are a favorite for a reason. They are tough at home, and this should be a wonderful, outstanding, impactful playoff football game. Yeah, that third down stat you just gave us, that's really, really important, especially in the playoffs when how many possessions you have can be paramount. Now, A.B., Rick in the chat said C.D. Lamb over seven and a half catches, hammer it, juice is worth the squeeze, or as a parlay piece. I saw on social media today that BetMGM, C.D. Lamb is the most popular player that's been bet on from a prop perspective. Let's start right there. How are you hammering this game? I love it. All right. Now, let me show you this. Uh, we've put together no-fly zones on Jordan Love and Dak Prescott all year long, so we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is put together a look at both of these teams in terms of their scoring per quarter. So take a look here at what we have. I think you'll enjoy it. The Green Bay Packers, all right? Offensively, 78 first quarter, 91 second quarter, 115 third quarter, 99 fourth quarter. Look at the Cowboys offense, 129, 167, 
69-144. You can see de defense on both teams here. And I get to all of that to say this. Every single person in the Dallas Cowboys franchise understands exactly what time it is. Mike McCarthy can't be screwing around. Dak Prescott can't be screwing around. C.D. Lamb is going to be the guy that he's looking for, and there's almost no one in the NFL that is better from the slot position than C.D. Lamb. I want you to watch a specific route, and Phil, give me the name of this route professionally because I really don't know it. I want you to under, like to, to break it down, but it's when C.D. Lamb is on the left side of Dak Prescott in the slot, and it's almost like a skinny post to where he goes across the middle and then basically runs to the flag. And Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb will destroy teams using this route. They do it over and over and over. Watch that. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so it's, it's called a, a far cross, um, you know, where, with a high angle to the back pylon. You know, it's, it's a Mike McCarthy specialty. So you have something holding it down like a dag route, like it's like a deep out. will hold down that, that coverage over there. And then they're sending – CD high over the top. You love it versus two safety defense where you can split the middle of the field, take the other safety away with that deep out or that corner, and then kind of breach the defense just straight up the gut. That's a McCarthy special. And that's why we have Phil on right there. Like they will crush it. And the reason that I say all that to say this, I think Dallas comes out in the first half and scores a ton of points. I love the CD land play and what we're going to ride on Cowboys minus two and a half. Both teams score 16 plus points. I think they both will score today. Also, Field goals are going to be essential for both teams. If Dallas is up big, they'll kick field goals. If it's close, they'll kick field goals. Green Bay will kick field goals, getting these at plus money. Damn right. No, I, I totally agree, agree with that. Howie, I'm coming totally to you in agree. a second. Love the field goals. I'm coming to you in a second, Howie. Phil, uh, Phil, real quick. You got something? Ten seconds. I was reading the chat. I'm trying to upgrade my stuff here. They said, who do I think? Would would be the Packers receiver that's going to break out today? I would say Jaden Reed. Just functional movement skills, the way he's playing right now. I think he has the most talent on that young group. Perfect. Look at his stats now, Howie. Let me come to you because one of the thing is about playoffs and storylines, right? And for some reason, Dallas continues to be America's team. They continue to be the most valuable franchise, despite the fact. And you were at ESPN through all of these years despite the fact that it's been since 1997, 26 years since they've done really anything in the playoffs. When yeah. you start adding that pressure and the fact that Mike McCarthy, if he loses today, he gone. How much do you think that plays into the nervousness and take the betting and stuff out of it, just trying to win this game? Uh, I think there is a bit of a factor because people know Dallas's history. I mean, and everyone knows Green Bay now, Jordan Love is the uh, darling child, and, and people think it's going to be an explosive game. Uh, I, it's funny. I don't. Uh, one thing about Green Bay, they love to have long drives. They like to keep the ball out of Dak's hands, in my opinion. LeFleur will set things up, and, and they'll have seven, eight-minute drives. And so I love the under in this game. I mean, 50 and a half. Uh, with Dallas's defense, uh, you know, the secondary is banged up, we know. But uh, I realistically think Dallas will not have the ball as much as they'd like. Uh, it would be nice to to think you're going to be throwing the ball all over the place. But uh, I think this is going to be more of a 27-17 uh, kind of game than a, uh, a, a blowout kind of game. I, I think it would be a too. decent game. Yeah. But, uh, I like the under is my favorite play in this game. It's interesting because when you're talking about uh, playoffs, it's it's never about stats or guys scoring or getting incentives. It's about winning and mm -hmm. moving on. So normally the under is the play because the one thing that we've learned, there's a lot more ways to win an under than there is to win it over. Right there, A.B.? Now, let's switch gears to game number two today. This game will also be inside. We know that both of these games will happen today. According to BetMGM, here is the line. The Lions by three. The total 51 and a half. Phil, coming right back to you. Because there's so many storylines within the storylines. Of course, they made the big trade a few years ago. Stafford going to L.A., Goff going to Detroit. It's worked out for both. But the Rams... Agreed. 
have a Super Bowl in their back pocket, right? And the yep. Lions are trying to get there. Let's yep. start with the keys to the game, and then we can delve in a little bit deeper. Well, Talk- it, it's 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 so it's so kind of intertwined into the keys to the game is the storyline. It's just the, the reality of it. We got the Rams coming on the road. You know, we got Stafford, who again we talked about. They gave up three first round picks. Who are those first round picks that Detroit got? Laporta, Gibbs, and J- Jamison Winston, Jamison Williams. So. Just think about how much this all kind of coincides with one another. All right. So then you got the wide receiver core with Puka Nakua is playing outstanding football. Stafford's coming home. Tyron Williams is toting the rock. You got Raheem Morris with a great defense. Aaron Donald's a, a leader of men. So we're ready to rock and roll right now. So Demarcus Robinson, from the receiver standpoint, has four straight games with a touchdown. We have protection has been outstanding for the Rams right now. So Sean McVay has been doing a great job of keeping Stafford upright. Uh, and they they have Akella Withers who's done an awesome job in the secondary, even though they're a little banged up, very similar to the Cowboys situation. The pass rush has been Aaron Donald plus two rookies. Byron Young has eight sacks. Kobe Turner has nine sacks. And But they have been susceptible to the big play, and mm-hmm. that's what the Lions have done best. Talking about the Lions, Laporta, question mark, looks like he's going to go. Give it a go, wear a brace. That's what I heard this morning. Khalif Raymond, from what I hear, is going to be out. All right, and Ben Johnson. We got to talk about this. He's at home. His name's been mentioned for almost every single head coaching availability right now. You don't think he's cooking in the kitchen right now to have some awesome stuff tonight to show you guys here uh, on the night game. So excited to watch what they're going to do. Detroit's defense has been a little shaky at best in the secondary. to so trying to tighten some things up. The positives in the backfield, David Montgomery, 1,000-yard rusher, 13 touchdowns. Love this guy. Gibbs, you know I'm one of the biggest fans of the rookie. Gibbs, 945 yards, 5.2 yards per carry, also 10 touchdowns. Amon Ra St. Brown, the Sun God, 119 catches, 1,500 yards. This guy's an absolute dog, special, special player. Great protection as well. Offensive line, they're fourth overall, only allowed 31 sacks. These running backs are, are, are outstanding. The defense has only held opposing running backs to three and a half yards of carry. But again, they're allowing 91.5 rating to quarterbacks. And this is a concerning statistic. 7.8 yards per attempt for quarterback. So that secondary needs to tighten it up. We got Aiden Hutchinson, who is this absolute freak of nature. So hopefully, yeah, typically these types of games come down to a final possession and a big play by somebody at the defensive line. I love Coach Phil's keys to the game. Now, something else that we're adding in to this particular show, because we're going to be bigger and better than ever. You're seeing it on your screen right now. And I'm telling you, I can't tell you everything, but you will see it as we roll out. Remember, we're going to be here forever. Now, we're going to have a poll every single day. I already saw somebody in the chat say, I love having the poll. You guys are the crew. That's who you are. And we're the crew, too. We're together. So here's what we look like right now. 174 votes. 57% are on the Rams plus the three. And then 14% on the over 53. Only 25% on the Lions minus the three. Now, A.B., from a betting perspective, when you think of the Lions, it's so hard to bet on them straight. And here's what I mean. If you are a normal coach and you're down one, you score a touchdown, you're on the road, and you go for two, which I was cool with until they get a five-yard penalty and you go back to the seven. Now, any sane coach would kick the extra point, tie it at 20, go to overtime now, the three, whatever. That's still in play. But instead, everybody's ticked off because the Cowboys win by one and it throws everything off. So with all that being said, from a betting perspective, what do you see? I see Dan Campbell coming out looking to just choke some fools out today. That's what I see, man. This Lions team is for real. And look, we've talked about for the last three years, that locker room is tight. Dan Campbell, Ben Johnson, keep going down the list. This coaching staff has got this locker room playing together, and they don't give up on each other. So, yeah, it was a wild one. But you know what? That's why they were going out and trying to do. It's all right. I don't think that we're going to see anything negative from that whatsoever. It is going to be a good game. The Rams are dangerous. And look at Matthew Stafford. His last three games essentially have been the exact same thing. 24 of 34, 300 plus yards. Our man has been throwing it all over the field. That said, it's the playoffs. Things tighten up. And as Howie was mentioning with Green Bay, Detroit, they can do the same thing at times to where they can go eight, nine, ten play drives and keep you off the field. So two plays that I like from this game. We put it in on last Thursday, Lions money line, and both teams score 16-plus points at plus 115. 
Also, like Stafford and Goff combined, over one and a half interceptions at plus 160. You get this at BetMGM, and remember, this counts for both quarterbacks, and it doesn't have to be each one of them throwing a pick. It could be Stafford throwing two. It could be Goff throwing two. It could be one and one. However combination, it does not matter, and you're going to see both quarterbacks put the ball in the air and put interceptions up. So that's how I see this game. It's going to be a great one. I can't wait to watch. It's going to be fun. When you're a really smart better, there's a lot of different ways to bring the number down because you never want to lay minus 150 or minus 160 on a prop. So these are really smart ways to look at it. Howie, let me come to you because the Lions – Boy, it sure looked like when they locked up the division, they're celebrating. Dan Campbell's bringing all the OGs up. This is for you. And then now we've got to pivot and then tell yourself, we can't just be happy to be here. We can do some damage in the NFC, despite the fact everybody everybody thinks the 49ers are going to roll, but the Lions have weapons. How are you looking at this game? First of all, they have a lot more weapons. You know, you have two great running backs between Montgomery and Gibbs. You have so many receivers. And if Laporte is playing, that's really crucial. But the one name that has not been mentioned yet is the guy who's going to be the star of the game, Aiden Hutchinson. He's going to be in Stafford's face the whole game. He's so tough, so impressive. And you know what? This is going to be one of the craziest crowds. Detroit having a home playoff game? It's going to be insane in there. I mean, I think that's going yeah. to affect Stafford. It's going to affect the Rams' play calling. The other thing, the Lions buy in on Campbell all the way, like was said. I mean, to me, this is a great situation, and I think Detroit is going to roll in this game. I'm really impressed with the fact that Detroit at home can do this to the Rams. Remember what the Rams were earlier in the season. I mean, give McVay credit. They've gone, come on strong. But to me, I like the Lions in this game. Phil, we hear how he loves the Lions. You've been intimately close with this particular franchise the last couple of years. Do you agree with what Howie just said? Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I agree. I agree with him uh, with, with the with the play. Um, I do also have a lot of concern and trepidation with a hot Stafford. I mean, just like I, I do believe Detroit will win this football game and, and I believe they'll win by six points. Um, but I, it, it's con- if you don't think that those guys are concerned about just the level of talent, like there's there's very few people that spin the football like Matthew Stafford in the world. So, you know, if he's got two receivers cup and Puka and they're playing hot, um, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting game. I, I, I feel that it'll it'll be a very good football game. I just have that that, that gut feeling. And when you talk about props and numbers, A.B., Phil just talked about it. Puka Nakua just set the all-time rookie record for catches in a season. He's he, he's like the mirror image of Cooper Cup. So now they've got basically two Cooper Cups. But when we're talking about props, the spread doesn't matter. The over-under doesn't matter. But they they sometimes don't adjust the number. They've been routinely – Cooper Cup's been a seven-and-a-half over-under guy for two seasons now. What do you see on that side of the football? Yeah, uh, this one's interesting. Okay, we spoke about it yesterday in regards to the Texans, and the Rams somewhat fall in this category as well. Be careful of teams in the playoffs that have nothing to lose and are playing with house money. The Rams were not supposed to be here. Uh, Remember, before the season, we didn't even know if McVay or Aaron Donald were even going to be in the league. We thought both of them would be working for broadcasting companies, right? Mm -hmm. This team is playing way over its head. They're playing really good football. Yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say, though? No, I was I, I was I was just laughing because I totally agree. I remember I listen to Colin Cowherd all the time. I think he's yeah, great, yeah. right? And he was make, making a joke about, and this is like a two week deal in August about they were tanking, like the Rams were tanking, you know. And yeah. he was being he was kind of being serious about it, like just looking at the roster. Who, who's this guy? Who's that guy? You know, like they're trying to take a run and, and rebuild and try to get some picks back. I mean, wow, he was wrong. And this team is not tanked. And this is a live live football team. A very live. And Matthew Stafford, like I said, has been throwing it all over the yard. And we broke down two weeks ago Stafford's no-fly zone charts. Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford will completely tailor an offense week to week based on your defensive injuries and what you have trouble covering. So every week the offense looks completely different because those two are vets and they can do it. I agree with Howie. I think that the Lions are going to roll. I think that they're the better team. But – 
be careful, man. But as you said, for props, the tough part is that, yeah, man, like Cooper Cup hasn't been the last couple of weeks exactly what he normally is. But neither was, neither was C.J. Stroud. And look what he did. It didn't take nothing, man. He got it going. So, yeah, be careful. All right, let's put a bow on this. Our normal length of show is going to be 30 to 45 minutes every single day. So as you're telling your significant others, your work, whoever, that's the block of time you're going to need to set aside for us every single day. There's a recap, and we put that up for you. Howie, let me come to you. 15 or 20 seconds, your final thoughts on the two games today, sir. I just hope they're good games. I think there is excitement. Yesterday, they weren't good games. Uh, to be honest. So as a fan, hope they're good games. Uh, like I said, I feel strongly the Lions, the, the Packer Cowboy game. I, I like the under. Uh, we'll see what happens. And I'm hoping I keep going on call too. So just have fun. We're going to click it off every day. Fun is at our core. That's what driving the line will be all about. I can promise you that you guys will be blown away, blown away by what we have for you. Now, Phil, really quickly, I want your final thoughts today as we hey. really start to think. Sorry about that, A.B. or Nils uh, or Sally or Roger or whoever. Um, when we look at today, what would be the two best teams from a competitive standpoint? that would be better to win moving forward into the second round? I know I'm putting this on you. Uh, on no, the spot. Just, I like these kind of questions better than anything. You just put me on the spot. Love it. Cowboys. Cowboys, they have their they're, they're complete football team. I think they're going to win today. I think they have a, the defense to, to move forward. They got stars in a bunch of positions. They have a head coach who's been there, who's won a Super Bowl. They have experience. The quarterback's playing well, the best football he's played in his career. The Cowboys would be number one. And then the Detroit Lions. I just like what they do, creativity on offense. I think what Ben Johnson has been able to do with all these skilled players and the way that they motion and shift and they bunch, restricted splits, run the ball, pass it, screens. I love those two teams. AB, talk to me. Weather is not going to be a problem today. We are going to have two nice games, comfortably controlled, 71 degrees. I'm excited for that. I'm with Howie, man. I just want to see some two good football games. Let's go. TJ said, so excited for this to get going on Monday. There's been a great weekend capping it up, fellas. Thanks for all the hard work, and let's go. To put a bow on everything, here is what we are doing. A weekday live show, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Was there really even any other time that we were going to do it? We're going to have a golf brand, Driving the Line Golf, with Steve Scott, Fast Eddie Fernandez, Robert Dameron, PGA Tour winner, every single Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. We will have college basketball from Howie every single day. He'll appear on the show on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have an NHL capper. We have a soccer capper. We will have cappers into the chat. We will have a club. And probably in the next week or two, that will be up and running called The Crew. You want to be a part of The Crew? You want to shoot your shot? Oh, that's going to be another show that we do. If you're an aspiring capper, we want you to reach out to us, driving the line at gmail.com. If you're a writer, if you want to be any part of a brand and you've never got the opportunity, I can't make you any promises, but I know this. We're going to grow this into the biggest sports betting brand and community in the world. You have my word, and we can't do it without you. Also, we will have a full functioning website so everybody will have an opportunity to be educated, to be entertained in so many different ways. We're going to lead it for you, but we're going to need you to come along for the ride. And I can tell you this with all sincerity in my heart. I have never had more fun putting something together building something with the guys that we have, the crew that we have, the people that we have that are all pulling in the same direction because that's how you build a brand and that's how you build a community and that's how you build a family. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So tomorrow we are live, live, live at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Hopefully you will join us as we continue to grow day after day. In the meantime, for the great Howie Schwab, for my man, Coach Phil McKagan, for our five-tool player, A.B., I'm the coach. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Enjoy the games today.